right, last class we looked at individual fixed compositions. Today we're going to look at transformations that are composite. So a little vocabulary here. Composite means it's made up of more than one part. In this case, more than one kind of transformation. We see composite transformations in real life all around us because the human brain loves patterns. So here's an example. These are called frisee patterns. And these are smaller tiles pieced together to form intricate patterns. You find these along the edges of buildings and doors. Here's some tiling on a floor, and notice again the lines of symmetry and the rotation as each tile shifts. And of course, we love um, looking at these patterns in intricate clothing and tapestries as well. So today we're going to look at a simplified version of how to create these patterns using the three transformations we've already studied, the rotation, the reflection, and the translation. And we're also going to use mathematical notation to describe how the shape maps from one to the next. So to show the progress of where we start to where we're going, we're going to label the vertices of our shape. The pre-image, or the original shape, we're going to denote, den label the vertex as A. In the following transformation, we'll label the same vertex A prime, and the next transformation will label the vertex as A double prime, and so on, so you can see where you're going. Remember that when you're mapping something, your notation has to describe every point on the shape, not just A to A prime. So let's start with creating our own glide ref reflection, which is a translation reflection. And we're given the simple triangle ABC. We want to first translate it, and they're going to give us the mapping x plus 7, y plus 2. This means that every point on the triangle is going to move in this fashion to transform it to the new placement. And remember, the shape is not going to change dimensions. So we start with the point A, which is negative 5, 6. By using the mapping, we're going to plug in the x value to see it'll shift over positive 7, and the y value will move up 2. So negative 5 plus 7 becomes um, 2, and 6 plus 2 becomes 8. So that makes our new point, which is a prime, to 8. Now we're going to shift point b the same way, so we're going to get b prime as 2, 3, and if we move c prime the same way, you're going to get 7, 11. Now by connecting these points, we're going to have our first transformed shape. Now let's take this new shape, and we're going to reflect it across the x-axis. So remember that the points of reflection are equal distance on either side of this line of symmetry. So b prime is 3 units away from the x-axis, and now b double prime will be 3 units on the other side. And we'll do this with point C and point A, and by connecting us, we will have our transformed triangle. Now to describe the mapping of this transformation, we're trying to describe the pattern for every prime point to every double prime point. So by looking at the values, we can just see that the x value is the same after the reflection, and only the y value now has the opposite value. And so to make it opposite, we make it negative. So the mapping description is xy to x negative y. All right, let's go backwards now and describe the composition there that I have with the mapping. So we're going to follow the letters, and we're going to start with a and transform it to a prime. Okay, we can see that all of the vectors move the same direction. They're going minus 2 to the x and minus 8 to the y. So our map is going to be x minus 2 and x minus 8. Now looking from a prime to a double prime, we're going to see that they're equal distances across from the y-axis here. So this is a reflection. And by looking at the actual ordered pairs, we can see that the x value is now negative because it's in the third quadrant. So the mapping from x to y becomes negative xy. And the general description of this composition would be a translation with a reflection in the y-axis. All right, let's do it one more time with something a little more challenging. So we start with a, b, c, and we're looking at a prime, b prime, c prime. And we notice they're not equal distance across any line, and they did not shift in the same direction. So what's left is a rotation. Now by looking at b to b prime, we can see that the vertex has been rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin. Now by looking from the prime to the double prime shape, we can see that the corresponding vertices are all equal distance across from the x-axis this time. 
Okay, so this would be a reflection in the x-axis. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to use graph paper, we're going to create some of these composite transformations in class and be able to describe them using mapping notation. I also challenge you to look around at the patterns you see in art and tiling and things around you to recognize the transformations we use to create them. And remember, you know you love math.